Nothing is worse than taking on an army of killer robots unprepared. My name is Kodiak, this is Legacy Gaming, and today we're sharing everything we wish we knew sooner about Atomic Heart. Let's be honest, reviews for Atomic Heart are all over the map, and one of the misconceptions we see repeated time and time again is the idea that enemies in the game are simply bullet sponges. They're not. Every single enemy in the game has a set of weaknesses and resistances that you can identify by scanning them. This will tip you off as to what type of damage you should employ during a fight, whether that be shock, ice, fire, kinetic, you name it. Scanning the enemy will reveal the truth. For example, let's take the elite Natasha bot. Small arms fire and electric attacks will do nothing against this enemy, which could be why some players think Atomic Heart is filled with bullet sponge enemies. Instead, if you craft a fat boy and take on the Natasha bot with this weapon, you will absolutely chunk its health. The same thing goes for other enemies like laborers, who are easy to take out with a few well-placed shots from a shotgun. If something doesn't feel right about taking on an enemy, take a second, scan them, and reassess the situation. Don't be afraid to experiment with different weapons and abilities because everything, and I do mean everything in the game, has a counter. Fast on the heels of that last tip is another combat prep tip you need to know about, canisters. Since you can only have two abilities equipped at any one time, you won't be able to cover all of your bases, and there will be gaps in what enemy weaknesses you can exploit at any one time. Enter canisters in the ability to infuse your weapons with a specific element, allowing you to deal with enemies that would otherwise feel spongy. To access this enhancement, simply tap the middle mouse button to cycle through canisters on the right side of your screen, or controller equivalent to pull up your radial menu. Here you can cycle through the various canisters you have in your inventory and equip them. If the option to add a canister isn't showing up, it's likely you haven't made the necessary canister upgrade to your weapon. No big deal, head back to the Nora bot, upgrade that weapon you want to equip canisters to, and tap into a whole new way to exploit your enemies. Munfish did such a great job implementing different combat combinations into the game, and it provides players with yet another way to exploit the weaknesses of the various enemies within Atomic Heart. For example, using Frostbite on most enemies will not only slow them down and freeze them, but will also make them susceptible to heavy melee attacks. They'll take increased damage, and if you manage to hit the damage threshold before the freezing effect wears off, they'll shatter in a brilliant explosion of ice and metal. Frostbite can even be utilized to freeze flying enemies, forcing them to fall from the sky, instantly exploding. In that same vein, mass telekinesis will quite literally grind the rotors of flying enemies to a halt, resulting in them coming crashing to the ground. If you have the upgrade that allows you to slam enemies down once lifted, you can not only use this to instantly kill most flying enemies, but also most of the smaller ground enemies, such as laborers and mutants. Now, if you're looking for a way to stop a robot in its tracks, try out a shock technique. This can be used to great effect to disrupt a strong melee attack, giving you precious time to dodge an incoming blow and reposition. Finally, don't sleep on Polymer Jet. It requires a bit of setup, but the result is a much stronger elemental attack. By coating an area or an enemy with Polymer, you can then use your elemental abilities and even canister attacks, and anything coated in Polymer will take substantially more damage. Think of Polymer as a direct way to weaken any enemy in the game, with some enemies quite literally resisting elemental attacks entirely unless coated with Polymer first. While it does take some thought and skill to use properly, the outcome is more damage and less wasted resources, and that is always a good thing. Now this tip may be obvious to some, but I'm willing to bet a fair number of you completely miss this. If you've invested a ton of polymers into skills you don't like or need, you can fully refund those abilities without any negative effects. Simply head over to your skills menu and select return. This will allow you to refund every bit of polymer you've spent so far, which means you can endlessly adjust your skill tree, experimenting with what works best for your playstyle, and adjust to whatever challenge is currently presenting as the biggest roadblock. The same principles also apply to loot and gear. Anything you aren't using shouldn't just be sitting around. Instead, go ahead and disassemble it for precious resources that can help you either craft what you need or eke out that one important upgrade. It'll make a world of difference and could save your life in a pinch. Since we're talking skills, we might as well plant our flag in the ground and share what we think are essential upgrades, apt in pretty much every situation. The first two are storage upgrades under the character tree called Neurocompression Tactical Backpack. 
Each of these will expand your main inventory slot by 10 additional slots. Not only does this allow you to carry more stuff, but that stuff includes more weapons, ammo, health, and even canisters. In a game where being prepared is everything, these simple upgrades are a game changer. Two other perks I think every player needs to take can also be found in the character tree. Second Wind gives you a second dodge charge, and since the first dodge begins recharging as soon as it's used, you can almost indefinitely string together dodge after dodge with this upgrade. Second is Sleaze Ball, which makes you invulnerable while dodging, giving you valuable iframes during that dodge window. For anyone that's ever played a Souls game, you know exactly why this is huge, as you now have a surefire way to avoid all incoming damage, albeit for a brief period of time. These two perks alone are fantastic, and if you're playing on the hardest difficulty in the game, can easily turn the tide of your progression. Don't sleep on the energy management tree either. It's simple and might not sound impressive, but once you start utilizing energy weapons, having this tree maxed out will help you fluidly alternate between melee and ranged attacks without ever running out of energy. What does this mean in the long run? Infinite ammo. And if those damn repair bots were annoying you before the upgrade, they're in for a nasty surprise. This next tip is straightforward, but will make your lives infinitely easier when on the surface. Now, to be fair, this was part of a tutorial, but let's be honest, who actually reads info panels anyways? Kidding aside, this is important information, so listen up. Throughout the world, you'll find relays that you can hack into, gaining control over various cameras and the connected area. One or more of these cameras will have direct line of sight to a building that controls the Hawk. Using one of these cameras, you can open that building's main door, exposing the controls to the Hawk. The top option will make the Hawk temporarily land, which you can then use as a pseudo elevator, riding it up, giving you access to various ground tethers that you can then zip line down to, gaining entry into different parts of the world. The bottom option, overload, is actually what I think you'll want. Doing so will overload the relay connected to the Hawk and force it to land. While grounded, all cameras and even robots in the area will shut down and remain offline, allowing you to freely explore the area without fear of combat. Eventually, repair drones will restore the relay, putting everything back online. You can pick off repair drones to buy yourself more time, but once the relay is back online, you'll need to overload it again using that same process. If you happen to check out our Atomic Heart review, then you'll already know about polygons. These are essentially dungeons players can find out in the open world. If you're looking for crucial weapon upgrades that can completely transform the functionality of a weapon, this is where you'll find them. Luckily, there's not a lot of mystery when it comes to tracking down the upgrades that you want. The upgrade menu, quite literally, points you in the right direction. It's worth mentioning that you can't just stumble into every one of these testing grounds. Oftentimes, you'll need to hack into the camera system, locate the door or gate guarding the entrance, and use it to gain access. Some polygons will even try and keep you out with a lock, in which case, you'll need to find the corresponding key. However, once inside, you'll find all sorts of unique puzzles, as well as tons of upgrade materials. Don't be surprised if you even come across a boss or two. Best all of these challenges and you'll be rewarded with a bronze, silver, or gold chest-headed robot. Seriously, take the time to try these out as they're an enjoyable piece of side content and will make both your weapons and time with the game more enjoyable. All right, let's end with some weapon tips. Look, bottom line, you can make any weapon work in Atomic Heart. That's part of the beauty of the game's combat progression system. But there are two weapons that rise above the rest. First and foremost, you need to craft and fully upgrade a melee weapon, full stop. There are numerous enemies in the game that are resistant to nearly everything else besides melee damage. If you thought you were going to get through Atomic Heart with just bullets, think again. That's just not the way the game is designed. Save yourself a massive headache, upgrade one of these as soon as possible, and keep it on you at all times. Heck, even the Swede fully upgraded is a solid choice. The second weapon I recommend is the Electro. While it seems like trash the first time you use it, with a little love and a couple upgrades, this thing becomes a difference maker in a fight. If you decide to go check out those testing grounds, go visit Polygon 12. There, you'll find a component that will enable an alternative fire on this weapon, turning it into an energy vampire. Upgrading the Electro to max will also allow you to siphon health from organic targets. What does this boil down to? A sidearm that takes up one inventory slot, has no ammo, and can infinitely generate health and energy for it or any other energy weapon. This is a god-tier gun with the sheer utility it brings to the table, and while you do get it super early on in the game, unless you really put in the work to upgrade it completely, you'll never recognize its true potential. 
So there you have it, everything we wish we knew sooner about Munfish Games' Atomic Heart. As always, if you appreciate guides that get straight to the point and don't waste your time with filler and fluff, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing. We've been having a blast with the game, but there's so much more to come later this year, so keep it right here and never miss a thing. I also want to invite you to join the Legacy Gaming community on Discord. We recently reworked our entire server, so if you're looking for a place to hang out, win free prizes, talk about great games, and group up with friends, check out the link in the description below. My name is Kodiak, and from everyone here at Legacy Gaming, thanks for watching, and play on.